Hey, what's happening guys? I got something pretty cool for you today. Sitting here on the old bench is the Unity UT801 uh, bench top multimeter. And this unit was kindly provided to us by our friends at Banggood for our consideration. So let's start off with some measurements. It is eight and a half inches wide that would be what about 21 and a half centimeters uh, from front to back we're looking at about 29 and a half centimeters or 11 and a half inches and thickness height whatever you want to call it about three and a quarter inches or a little over eight centimeters so this is a this is a pretty big unit, and it is a, a dual power unit. You can use it with an AC adapter or with C type batteries. The only thing is, this is the adapter it comes with, and as you can see here, it says it is a 220 volt adapter, even though it comes with a US style plug. I tested it and it puts out 7.3 volts not the 9 volts that it says or the 9 volts that this unit requires now this thing is made out of plastic probably ABS um, it is a manual ranging multimeter 2000 counts 10 mega ohm impedance and if we look up here on the top, I'll show you the um, accessory compartment and where the batteries go. All right, so you turn these half turn screws to the open position. And this little cover here pops off. And inside is what comes with the unit. Standard set of multimeter probes with shrouded 90 degree 4 millimeter banana plugs. This nice little adapter here that allows you to test um, NPN and PNP style transistors as well as a place for your K style thermocouple and a place for SMD component testing. You get a K style thermocouple some alligator clips that kind of push onto the end of your probes and that's about it now if we look in there we can see where the batteries go so you see six C size batteries can inhabit that area there. Or you can power it with a 9 volt adapter, which is what I'm doing. Now you can also see here it says to avoid electrical shock, remove the leads before opening the case. And in there you can see our fuses, no HRC fuses. These are the small style automotive fuses. So we'll put this back together. This like cloudiness decolor discoloration here, whatever you want to call it on the plastic is uh, the way it came. It just came in a nice big cardboard box, well protected, but you know nothing fancy. Let's take a uh, take a look at the back of it all right so here's the back of the unit and you can see our 9 volt input jack there and a switch to switch from battery to adapter and it looks like there were a couple of options that could be added this one up here looks like a uh, rj45 connector this one's probably was going to be a usb and this one I don't know, maybe a DB15. 
and you can see the manufacturing debris that is left on here. Some nice big rubber style feet and it does have a rather nice pull out adjustable bail. So let me get this into place on the shelf and we'll take an in-depth look at it. Alrighty, I thought we'd start off with some voltage measurements and I've got it hooked up in parallel with my trusty mass tech meter which we will bring in as necessary to verify our readings. So let's start with it in the 2 volts DC range. And you see we are getting 1.117 volts from the Unity and 1.110 from the Centec. So let's turn this up to 20 volts. And now I am getting 7.05 on here, 7.02 on the Centec. So, you know, pretty close. Let's see if we can get it right on 15. Close enough. So 14, 15 on the Unity, 14.95. It's a little bit off, but it's still within the spec. Crank her up a little higher. 19.1, 19.07. Alright, we'll take her up to 20 volts. Oops. And we'll give her all that my bench top power supply can give. 31.1, 31.2. It's a it's pretty well within range so pretty good for DC voltage for our next trick how about some resistance I know you can't see the color bands but that is a 10k resistor we'll clip her on here and what do we get oh I'm still in the voltage range duh not gonna get much anything there are we nine point nine six not too bad let's try uh, 220 ohm two point one five well, close enough definitely within range all right, let's switch over to a capacitance measurement. And to do that, first thing we're gonna to need to do is switch here. You can see for our capacitance, we need to go over to the milliamp microamp range. All right, first up, I've got a 22 nano clipper in there. Hey, that's right on the money. All right, next, how about 22 microfarad? So I have to go over to 200. Make sure we line up our positive and negative. 17.8, close enough. She's a... Uh, Definitely on the money there. All right, next we will try diode. All right, for diode, we need to move our common back over to common. And you heard the thing being very angry. 
let's start with a uh, 1N 4007. So we should get a diode drop of about 0.5 to 0.7. Five seventy, not too bad. Let's see, you get a get an LED here. Let me get one out. It's a red one. Hmm, not getting anything there. Let me test it on the other meter. I just had to switch LEDs. That one was bad. Here's a good one. And it lights it up and we get 1702. All right. Um, that's odd. All right, let's pull out these leads. And we'll put in our little adapter. And I've got a PNP transistor for us to try. <laughs> if I can read that. Okay, so PNP goes on the right side. get that in there right there we go amplification 251 not too shabby and we can try the uh, thermocouple it is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit in here or 23.8 degrees Celsius. Plug in our thermocouple and see what we get. Twenty six. Well, that's a little bit off. Just a note here is the hold function. So you can hit that and add or remove whatever you need to. And there's also a button for the light and it looks pretty good without the light on. So all in all, this is a very basic low-end beginners bench multimeter but considering that you would pay you know upwards of three to five hundred dollars uh, for a fluke or an agilent or a key sight this thing coming in at a hundred bucks and you can probably get a little bit under a hundred maybe around ninety dollars is a pretty good deal so I'd like again to thank our friends at Banggood for sending this and I'd like to thank you guys for watching. There will be a link down below to the Banggood webpage if you're interested in this. Um, that link is a special link that shows Banggood that you guys have seen this video so take a look at it. Show them that you know folks are watching the videos and that way they'll keep sending us fun stuff to play with. All right, guys, thanks again. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe.